reminder, there's a review session for the exam. Uh, there's one on Sunday. I will film the one on Sunday, so you can watch it on the web if you can't make it. However, it's probably in your interest to go because really the best way for a review session to work is for you to ask questions and say, I really don't do, can't understand Simpson rule, can you go over it? Or I can't do this in rule, how do we do it? Rather than tell me everything that I never learned because I don't know anything. Um, so watching it is probably less useful than attending. Um, but I understand people have obligations. Uh, what else? On the web page for the class, I put up um, old exams from Math 132. Uh, I think one actual exam, two practicing exams, and an exam from Math 126, which covers some of the same material. The drawback of all of these is the 132 exams were behind. So they all cover volumes, which will not be on the exam, although we will cover it just before the exam. So they all cover volumes of revolution. We will not have raw volumes of revolution on the exam. I think one of them covers arc length. Again, we won't get to arc length before the midterm. So you know, that means that, well, and the Math 126 exam doesn't have any stuff on areas, which we'll do today nor does it have anything on improper integrals. So none of the four or five or however many I put up there samples are perfect, but it gives you an idea of what the exams are like. And if you look at all of them, you'll notice that they differ quite a lot. Um, so anything else I need to cover? No? All right. Yeah. The appropriate ones. How's that? So, look on the web page, buy your recitation. Most of the people in this lecture are in ESS 001, if I put a little arrow there. But one recitation, uh, Yesla Cha's recitation, which I think is, she's not sitting there today, um, is, I don't know, seven, is number seven, is in, I think, Old Engineering 143, I think. So recitation seven, is in this room, and six, eight, no, there is no six. Questions? No? Okay. So I, I want to apologize at the end of the last class. I put a problem up which the answer was right, but you can't do that problem. So I meant to put up a different problem, so let me put up the different problem. So here's what I here's what I put up. So the question was, does this converge or diverge? And really, I meant to put up this problem. Uh, <clears throat> or maybe I meant to put up this problem. You should be able to do both of them. Uh, do you want me to ask them the clicker questions? No. no? Nobody likes the clicker questions? No. no. Do they make me work? Okay. So I will just ask, is this converge or diverge? Diverge. What? Okay, so that's wrong. Um, but see, it sounds good. 
not right. But okay. But yes, he had a 50-50 shot and made some argument that would convince anybody but me, maybe. Uh, not anybody, but anybody in this room but me. So, okay. This one actually converges. And the reason it converges is because this is like 1 over x squared. So this is, so since sine of x over x squared is certainly less than 1 over x squared, and it's greater than minus 1 over x squared, and the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared converges. Yeah? So the sign is between 1 and minus 1 all the time. So this is never bigger than 1 on the top, and never less than minus 1 on the top. Sometimes it's 0, sometimes it's a half, sometimes it's 0.006, but it's never bigger than 1. Right? Okay. So a lot of times in calculus when you see a sine or a cosine, you should think, oh, maybe I can replace that with 1. You can't always, but sometimes you can, so you should think about it. So here, this is true, but I, well, okay, it's less than or equal to, because for certain values of x, the sine is actually 1. But the sine is always between plus 1 and minus 1. And x squared is always x squared. Okay? So this, this integral, if it exists at all, is always less than this integral. Well, in absolute value. Because sometimes it's negative. But this integral, we know, converges. And if I did that last time, I believe. Right? Maybe 1 over x squared? No? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Because when you integrate x to the minus 2, you get negative x to the minus 1. When you take the limit of x to the minus 1, as x goes to infinity, you get 0. So we're cool. So this guy, I mean, and in terms of the picture, the guy on top, so here's 1 over x squared. Here's minus 1 over x squared. And sine x over x squared does something like this. This area here, we know is finite. It's uh, 1. You, know, you can do this out more carefully if you like. Okay? So your argument was wrong, but it sounded good. It gave you, you know, points to find. Uh, okay, what about this guy? I won't laugh at you. I didn't laugh at him. I like his argument. It was just wrong. Nobody's going to tell me? Diverge. Well, yeah, because the other one converges, so geez, why would I put two convergence? Okay, yeah, why is it diverge? Because 1 over x diverges. And 1 plus sine x squared of x is always bigger than 1. So, by the same reasoning, well, similar reasoning, 1 plus sine squared of x, well, you take a, you take a number and you square it, it's always positive. So this is certainly bigger than 1 for all x's. And x is always the same as x. And so we have that. And this integral, which also we did, this diverges because of what he said. This is a log. Log of infinity is infinity. This is bigger. This is too bad. Too big. And we have something bigger than so since this is bigger, and that gets as big as you like, this gets as big as you like. 
I know this comparison theorem is a little tricky for people. It's a good skill to learn, to be able to look at things and compare them to other things that you know. Of course, you don't necessarily know what you know yet, but when you do it enough, you'll have a better feel. But in general, you know, 1 over x to a power, there was a homework problem that asked about that. And we're going to infinity, and the power is bigger than 1, it converges. If we're going to 0, and the power is less than 1, then it will converge. So, yeah. This guy? Well, it isn't obvious from the picture. I mean, I can't really draw the picture how it diverges because it looks like it should. And in fact, if you sit down with a calculator or a computer and you start numerically integrating 1 over x, you're going to get a number because it diverges so slowly that you won't see it. But it does diverge because it's like the log. And the log grows to infinity. But the log grows very slowly. The log is an exponent. So it grows, but it grows slowly. I mean, the log of a thousand is not that big a number. And if we're doing base 10, the log of a thousand is three. That's not a very big number. And from a thousand to a million, if we're doing base 10, base E is similar, a thousand to a million would grow from three to six. You can't just look at the graph. You can look at the graph and draw conclusions when conclusions are warranted. So here I can look at the graph of this and compare it to the graph of this. I know that 1 over x is too big. And I know that this guy, 1 plus sine squared over x, does something up here. It touches, I'm drawing it not touching, but it touches at every multiple of 2 pi. But you know, it does something up here. So if this is too big, certainly that's even bigger. So that really, the comparison theorem is where you look at the picture. But to just look at the integral and say, for sure it diverges. You know, if I give you a penny every day for a billion years, you'll have a lot of money. Well, maybe a trillion years. But, you know, if I, I always give you a penny every day, your amount of money is unbounded. But it takes so long that you can't really tell. Yeah? It depends on whether we're going to zero or infinity. So there's a homework problem like this which asks, I forget whether the homework is to zero or to infinity. Does anyone know? Has anyone done it? It's like the last one on the homework assignment. Should have done it because it was, what? Zero. It's something like, Find the values of the t for which this converges. Yeah. Or maybe it's 1 to infinity. Okay. Is it infinity or 0? 1. It doesn't matter. Okay. So this guy, for what values of t will this converge? Okay. So, I mean, if, so part of the point of homework you're supposed to do them and sort of remember how they work? Seems nobody remembered how this worked or they didn't do it, one or the other. Yes, P less than 1. Why? Because when you do out the integral, if P is less than 1, then the x goes to the top when you integrate. And so that means that this 0 becomes a 0 rather than going up. But all of these 1 over x to the p's look like that, near 0. And you can't tell just by looking. And this, non zero, 1 to infinity dx over, let's put a q here just to differentiate it. This guy converges for q bigger than 1 for the same reason. Q for the same reason. And when Q when P or Q equals one, it diverges in both places.
you can just, I mean, you did just do this unless you can do your homework and then train on it. Um, okay. So let me move along to the next topic, um, which is physics apparently. Projection motion. Actually, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use it. Okay. So, you are now supposedly experts on improper integrals and techniques of integration. We'll find out next week whether that's true. Um, and then, the next topic that we're doing is returning to the idea of finding, well, let's say, this is, this is easy. Suppose I have two curves here, like y equals x, and of course, since I neglected to bring my notes, uh, y equals, let's put that at 1, x minus 1, no, that's not the right one. Uh, why, why can't I do this? Uh, how about 4? minus x squared. Let's just do this one instead. So 4 minus x squared looks like that. And what I want here is this area. So this is not a hard problem because you just have to view it properly. This is an integral, and in order to find the area between the curves, you just subtract the top, the bottom curve from the top curve. So the area between is just going to be. Well, I mean, let's do it a little formally. If we make a little rectangle here, its height, because remember when we're integrating, we're adding up the areas of little rectangles, its height is going to be from here to here, or from here to here. So this is 4 minus x squared minus x. So the height of my rectangles is 4 minus x squared minus x. Top curve minus the bottom curve. And so the area in the integral from somewhere to somewhere of 4 minus x squared minus x dx. Now we have to figure out where the somewhere and the somewhere are. There's a well-defined area here. I'm not telling you where they cross, but you've got to figure it out. So we have to find this point, and we have to find this point. In order to do this problem, we have to find those two points. Um, So how do we find those two points? Okay. We wait for me to do it. So how do we find those two points? Okay, right, we set them equal to each other. So we need to know. So that means that we rewrite this as, let me bring it over there because I like it. x squared plus x minus 4. So I need to solve that. Well, that's it. Doesn't factor nice, but that's okay. I know the quadratic formula. It is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 
minus 4c <coughs> over 2. So it's two icky numbers, but they're numbers. Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. That's when they cross. Nothing wrong with the square root of 17 is perfectly good. Do not use a calculator, just write that. And so now we know where they cross. This is where x is. This one is negative 1 minus square root 17 over 2. And this one is negative 1 plus square root 17 over 2. But okay. So that means that the integral we want to do is from negative 1 minus root 17 over 2 to negative 1 plus root 17 over 2 of that. And that's easy. That is 4x minus 1 third x cubed minus, yeah, minus uh, x squared over 2 evaluated from blah to blah to blah to blah, which is Uh, didn't leave enough room on the board. So come over here, which is four times negative one plus root seventeen over two minus one third negative one plus root seventeen over two. <coughs> Minus or minus one minus root seventeen. So these numbers are ugly. Is there a third somewhere? Minus. But there it is. idea up a little bit. Sometimes, in fact, let me just give an example that I know works. Uh, I don't want that one. I don't want that one. Okay. I'm going to have y squared minus 3. I'm going to write this one. <laughs> Terrible having a short memory. Y squared. So I want to find the area between those two guys. And here, um, this is y squared. 
So this is a parabola going sideways. Right? So uh, if we look at the picture here, y equal to x minus 1 looks like this. And y squared equals 2x plus 6. Uh, this is the same as saying y squared minus 6 and 2 equals x. So, I'm sorry? No? Okay. Somebody said something. I'll just put it here. Okay, if you prefer, if it makes you happy, so either I can do that, or if I prefer, I could say y is plus or minus the square root of 2x plus 6. The same to me. Okay. Um, so when 2x plus 6 is, so uh, here this is a parabola. Well, this is the top hand. Sorry. Either one, they're the same to me. So this guy is 0 when x is negative 3, and so is this guy. So this here at negative 3 looks like this. I mean, it's not level, but right? And then this piece, so that's this piece. And then this piece looks like that. And we're looking for the area here. Now, Let's think about, so, so let me not do it this way. Let me start it this way. The way, wherever he is. There you are. You suggested even though you didn't know the suggestion. So let me do it this way. This is the hard way. Why is this way hard? Number one, square roots suck. But number two, let's look at this. So the area is the top curve minus the bottom curve, the integral. The top curve here is always this guy. Let me write it up here. y equals plus square root of 2x minus 6. And the bottom curve is not always x minus 1. Because it changes right here. So in this region, I have a different bottom curve than I have in this region. So I can set this up, let me not even find the points yet, as the integral from negative 3 to some point here, let me just call it A. The top curve is the positive square root, the bottom curve is the negative square root. So it's minus a minus. So that's this area. So. And then the other area. I guess I'm just like behind. So plus the integral from A. call this point B, which I just didn't even find yet, A to B of the top curve is still the x square root, and the bottom curve is x minus 1. So that's certainly, that's this area. That certainly represents the area. The integrals aren't too bad. I can do those integrals. They're both easy substitutions. I can find the points A and B without too much trouble. But I have to do two integrals. I have to hurt my brain to think about it. You want me to do this? No? So you can do this. It's fine. You'll get the right answer. Let's find A and B. Well, yeah. Let's find A and B. Do I need them? Mm, not really. So A is where uh, is where the negative square root well a is 
declare where two x plus no negative square root two x plus six equals x minus one. That's to get a and b is where x minus one equals plus the square root. Yeah. Uh, from being unable to read, they're all pluses. I just can't read. Yeah. They're pluses. I just wrote the cross. Very small. Okay. So I can find these points A and B. That's the area. This is a sucky way to do this problem. I mean, it's okay. But we can also do it another way. We can just lay down. We lay down. Boom. There's a problem with a whole lot easier. Right? So sometimes it's good to be lazy. So if we look at this problem, it's a bad picture. No, I don't know that is. If we look at this problem from the side, notice that these guys always have the same curve. From here to here. If you look at just the y values, x minus 1 is always bigger than the parabola. You have to lay down, right? Going up is like this way. Because this is increasing. So if we slice it sideways instead of up and down, this curve, the right curve, So the right curve, y is x minus 1, that's already, so x is y plus 1, this curve, on the right is x equals y plus 1, and the curve on the left is, I wrote it down and then erased it, x is y squared minus 6 all over 2. And so that means that this area is the integral from y plus 1 minus 1 half y squared minus 6 y, I already used a and b, so let's use c and d. We integrate from c to d, but those are the y values where they cross. So we want to find the y values where these two things cross. So the c and the d solve y plus 1 equals 1 half y So part of this, and in fact you should be thinking this way, this is part of why it's useful to think about the little rectangles. Here are my rectangles are laying down, and they go this way. And it makes my life easier to cut it sideways instead of cutting it vertically. Um, I guess I might as well solve this. So that's the same saying. This is y plus 2 is y squared minus 6, which is the same as saying y squared 
minus 2y minus 8 and that one factor, right? You think two and four. So that guy factors. So this is y minus four. Zero. So that means that my two is C. C is negative two. D, D. So that means that my integral is from negative two to four of Well, it's all there, right? Y squared minus 2y is equal to zero. One half. Let me leave the other. Okay. And then this integral is easy. Just multiply it out. So the upshot of this is we want to think about how we're slicing up the object. And if it's more convenient to slice it horizontally, go ahead. In fact, if it's more convenient to slice it, well, whichever way it's more convenient to slice it. Now sometimes, maybe the curves cross three times. Does anybody want me to finish this integral? I'm happy to do it if somebody wants me to. Yes, you do? She wants me to come to this. So, uh, this is, let me just do the algebra here. This is minus 2 to 4, minus 1 half y squared, plus 3, plus 1 is 4, uh, plus y, dy which is minus one sixth y cubed plus four y plus one half y squared evaluated from negative two to four, which is minus one sixth four cubed is sixty four. So times 4 is 16. Did I lose a minus sign somewhere? No. And uh, half of 16 is 8. And then we subtract off negative 2 cubed is 8, so this is 8 over 6. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 2 squared is plus 4. And then you add. Um, let me point out, this is not a class in arithmetic, so if you have things like 1 half plus 5 twelfths plus 3 nineteenths on the test, you can just leave it that way. I care that you get the 1 half plus 5 twelfths plus 3 nineteenths. And whether you can add fractions or not, it's not really my concern. I can't, so why should you be able to? I mean, I can, okay, but I don't want to. So my concern is that you understand the material well enough to get an answer. That does not mean that you cannot, that you can just leave something like the sine of pi as the sine of pi. You should know that the sine of pi is zero. So I need you to do the obvious, and, and I would prefer that you know you not leave eight over four as eight over four. You should know that eight over four is two. But if you don't want to add 5 twelfths and 47 nineteenths, I can understand why not. Okay. Uh, so this is some stuff. And I'm going to leave it to you to do that.
guess I have time for another one. Um, let me just think about. It. Okay. So. I want to do this one. What curve is on top? So let's call this one F. Let's call this one G. Nobody knows? So, 
entities cross. So I guess one thing, let me point out, remind you, the absolute value of x is x if x is positive and negative x if x is negative, right? This is another way to read this is, if what's inside the absolute value is positive, leave it alone. If it's negative, it change the sum. So students mess this up all the time. Don't panic when you see absolute values. Just remember that they change whenever what's inside changes. And so here, we need to know when does x equal x squared minus 2. That will tell me this intersection point over here. So that is x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. And then the square root here. So that's right. Yeah. What? Okay, so x minus 2 times x plus 1, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, good, that makes it easier. And so that happens when x is 2 or x is negative 1. But the negative 1 1 I don't want. That's here. Because I only looked when x is equal. And also, if I looked on the other side, I would get negative 2. So this is the one I want. And so that means that this area is the integral from 0 to 2 of x minus x squared plus 2 dx. And then I can double it because it's the same as the integral from negative 2 to 0 of negative x minus 1. Okay? And that's probably a good place to stop. Before you pack up and leave, let me remind you some things. Pay for homework because we have a holiday now. Oh, when we're on your first today is Friday. The calendar may say Wednesday, but today is Friday. So if you have a recitation on Wednesday, no, you don't today. If you have a recitation on Friday, yes, you do. Um, pay for homework is due after the break. There's another web assigned due. It only has seven problems from this stuff. And then there's my new session that I have.